one of the things we can get is a special form of this last result when the function g of t is equal to 1. So in our convolution, if g of t is equal to 1, then the convolution of f and g becomes simply the integral from 0 to t, f of tau d tau. If we take the Laplace transform of this integral, recall that from what we saw a little bit ago, that the Laplace transform of the convolution of f with g, this is equal to the products of the Laplace transform of f with the Laplace transform of g. So this is L of F times L of, of G. Well, the Laplace transform of F, we call that F of S. And when G of T is equal to 1, then its Laplace transform is simply going to be 1 over S. So this integral, so the Laplace transform of this integral simply becomes F of S divided by S. And we can also state the inverse form. The inverse Laplace transform of F of S divided by S is simply the integral from 0 to t of f of tau d tau. The next thing we're going to look at is a particular type of integral equation, which is called a Volterra integral equation. And it's going to involve integrals of the following type. So suppose we have some function f of t which is going to be given by g of t plus the integral from 0 to t of f of tau times h minus, excuse me, times h of t minus tau d tau, where in this expression, g and t would be known functions. So g, excuse me, g and h are, are known functions. Typically, in order to solve Volterra integral equations, we can apply our Laplace transform to both sides and use some of the theorems that we developed um, in this chapter. Okay. As an example, let's take a look at example number six. Okay. Let's suppose we're asked to solve f of t is going to be equal to 3t squared minus e to the negative t minus the integral from 0 to t f of tau e to the t minus tau d tau. And we want to solve this for f of t. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to begin by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. So this is going to be the Laplace transform of f of t. And again, I'm going to split this right hand side apart. We already know that the Laplace transform is linear. So it's going to be 3 times the Laplace transform of t squared minus the Laplace transform of e to the negative t minus the Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t. Oops. Of f of tau e to the t minus tau d tau. The Laplace transform of f, we call that f of s, is equal to the Laplace transform of t squared is going to be 2 divided by s cubed. It's one more power than what we have um, of, f of the t of s in the bottom with that same power factorial up top, but 2 factorial is just 2 minus the La inverse Laplace, tra excuse me, the Laplace transform of e to the negative t. That is 1 divided by s plus 1. And now this thing here is actually the Laplace transform of a convolution. Okay. It's the convolution of our own known function f with the function g, where g of t is simply going to be equal to e to the t. And again, that t minus tau, that's coming in as a part of the definition of the convolution. Okay. But we know... Let me simplify this a little bit. This is uh, 6 over s cubed minus 1 over s plus 1. That this is simply going to be equal to the product of the Laplace transform of f with the Laplace transform of g, which is that of just e to the t. So we get that f of s equals 6 
divided by s cubed minus 1 divided by s plus 1 minus the Laplace transform of f, that is equal to f of s. And then the Laplace transform of e to the t is simply 1 over s minus 1. We want to get the f of s terms on one side. So the next move would be to add this to both sides. So we can add f of s times 1 over s minus 1 to both sides. So we have the f of s, and I'm actually going to do two steps in one. Let's actually factor out then um, that common f of s term. This is equal to 6 over s cubed minus 1 over s plus 1. I can get common denominators and all that good stuff here. Um, it's going to be s minus 1 over s minus 1, which will simply give us s over s minus 1 times f of s is equal to 6 over s cubed minus 1 over s plus 1. And then lastly, to get the f of s by itself, you can either divide by this factor or we can simply multiply both sides um, by the reciprocal. So this all cancels. We get f of s is equal to 6 times s minus 1 over s to the fourth minus s minus 1 over s plus 1 times, times s. From here, we would want to combine them into a single fraction and do the partial fraction decomposition. Okay. So combine, do partial fractions. I'm going to skip that step just for some time constraints. But if you do that, you should get 6 divided by s cubed minus 6 divided by s to the fourth plus 1 over s minus 2 over s plus 1. And now finally we can find f of t. f of t is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, which means we need to simply apply the inverse Laplace transform to each one of these, these functions. Okay. And maybe I'll kind of write it out, but for the first one, notice how we have a 3 factorial here. So if we have a 3, excuse me, an s to the third, then we want to have a, a, two, a 2 factorial up top, which is just 2. I can factor a 2 out of the 6, which will give us a factor of 3 here, minus, now up top here, we need to have a 3 factorial. Okay. And luckily, 3 factorial actually happens to be exactly 6. So thankfully, that coefficient is exactly what we need it to be. This is plus the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 2 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1. And so after all of that, this is what we get. f of t is going to be equal to 3 times this inverse Laplace should give us t squared minus, this is the inverse Laplace that's going to give us uh, t cubed. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is just simply going to be equal to, to 1. And then minus 2 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s plus 1 is simply e to the negative t. And therefore we've solved our Volterra integral equation. This is the function f of t.